Hello, I'm Araz and welcome to a brand new video about Operation Focus. First, let's have a look to the Six Day War background. Four years after the Arab world's first attempt to annihilate Israel, Egypt, the leader of Arab nations and Israel's prime opponent at the time, became a republic on July 23, 1952. Jamal Abdul Nasser, its new socialist, pan-Arabist leader, pursued the policy of seeking unification with ideologically like-minded Arab states. On September 21, 1955, Nasser notified the United States that the arms deal between Czechoslovakia and Egypt for Soviet weapons was to go ahead. On July 26, 1956, Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal, France and Britain combined forces to repossess the Suez Canal and Israel joined the coalition. The resulting 1956 war ended in a mixed results for all four participants. France and UK defeated Egypt militarily but didn't repossess the Suez Canal and were forced to retreat by political pressure. Egypt was beaten but scored a diplomatic victory. Israel was forced to retreat from Sinai but only after securing American assurances over freedom of navigation in the Strait of Tehran. A few days prior to their withdrawal, Israel's foreign minister stated that any interference with Israel's freedom of navigation through the Strait of Tehran would be regarded as an attack. On June 10, 1964, Israel's inauguration of the national pipeline that streamed water from the Sea of Galilee to irrigate the Negev Desert was a major milestone in a dispute concerning regional resources of water that evolved into the water war. On May 22, Israel Prime Minister stated that Israel won't be the starter of the war but Israel is fully confident in its power. The Egyptian president's fiery response to this speech followed after midnight May 23rd when Nasser announced the closure of Strait of Tehran to Israel shipping. Israel turned to the United States to enforce its 1957 guarantee of freedom of navigation through the Strait of Tehran, but to no avail. For all practical purposes, Nasser's speech as broadcast on May 23rd made war in the Middle East inevitable. June 2nd that day, the Israel Defense Force chief presented to the Israel government relative strength between the Egypt Air Force and the Israel Air Force, which was 213 Egypt Air Force combat aircraft versus 192 Israel Air Force fighter aircraft. Israel could hardly hope for a better relative strength situation. Focus had been activated in an Israel Defense Force general staff meeting on June 4th with D-Day June 5th and H-hour 745 a.m. Six formations were tasked to strike at 7.45 a.m. The targets were eight Egypt Air Force bases. From 7.45 to 8.25 a.m., Israel planes took off from Khatsor, Ramat David, Ekran and Lod air bases and bombed eight air bases in Egypt. Each of the eight Egyptian air bases bombed at least three times during first wave. The first 45 focus strike formations claimed up to 195 aircraft destroyed on the ground, plus 8 aircraft in the air for the loss of 9 aircraft. Operation Focus First Wave ended at 9 am. The success of the Focus First Wave was overwhelming. Reports yielded that all targets in the four closest Egypt Air Force bases, as well as in the farthest Egypt Air Force bases, had been destroyed. Ten minutes later, Israel Air Force monitoring indicated that Syrian MiG-21s had been scrambled to fly a defensive patrol. At 9.20 am, Egypt had ordered the Egyptian command of the Jordanian Armed Forces to begin artillery bombardment of Israel Air Force bases and to initiate battle procedure for nocturnal commando raids against Israel Air Force bases. You can find more details about the war on Jordanian front in the video linked in the description. A minute after the first focus, second wave strike formation departed. Ten focus second wave strike formations departed from 9.34 to 9.55 am. Tasked to strike four Egyptian Air Force bases that had been attacked during the first wave and three Egypt Air Force bases that hadn't been attacked. Additionally, from 9.33 to 10.10 am, Israel Air Force dispatched three formations to support Israel Defense Force Command South in Northeast Sinai. Arab reaction to focus was still verbal and local. Jordan and Syria still seemed to have lacked information about what was really going on and hadn't yet reacted. By then, focus had achieved its objective of air superiority and Israel Air Force combat aircraft could be tasked to support the Israel Defense Force ground forces much sooner than expected. Also in support of the Israel Defense Force advance in Sinai Desert, Israel Air Force attacked Egypt armor in Birgaf Gafa sector. 
In the second wave, Israel Air Force claimed the destruction of 9070 Egyptian aircraft and three Syrian aircraft. Israel only lost one Mirage. At 11.40 am, Jordanian artillery started to bombard Ramat David. So at 11.50 am, Israel's defense minister approved Israel Defense Force's request to task the Israel Air Force to attack Jordanian field artillery and strike Jordanian air bases. The focus third wave mostly targeted Jordanian and Syrian air bases. From 12.10 pm onwards, two formation of Israel aircrafts engaged enemy aircraft over northern Israel while patrolling the area. Also, Iraq and Jordanian aircrafts could reach to Israel airspace and bombed Syrian airfield at around 12.21 pm. In response to these attacks, two formations tasked to strike Amman and radar station at Ajlon. The Israel Air Force dispatched 22 formations to strike two Jordanian Air Force bases, Amman and Mafraq, and four Syrian Air Force bases, Bali, Dumer, Mazza and Saikal. By the time focus had progressed from the 3rd to the 4th wave, losses of Egyptian Air Force combat aircraft had reached approximately 75% of the pre-war order of battle. The Jordanian Air Force had been practically destroyed and the Syrian Air Force combat aircraft inventory had been approximately halved. The Israelis had lost 16 combat aircraft at a very conservative evaluation of 240 Arab combat aircraft destroyed in the air or on the ground during the first three waves. After Israel Air Force detected that the attacking aircrafts were Iraqi aircrafts, decided to attack Iraq H3 airfield. The most practical path for the Israel Air Force to disrupt or to end Iraqi airstrikes was to raid the only Iraqi airfield within range and to destroy the Iraqi hunters on the ground. Four squadrons departed Ramat David at 2.15 pm to strike H3. A low mission profile was planned because the Syrian Air Force was not completely wiped out. The route was in a straight line from the southernmost point of the Sea of Galilee heading almost exactly east, leading to H3. Israel Air Force claimed a total of 9 to 12 destroyed aircraft. Finally, after a 56 minute break with no Israel Air Force departures, Fifth wave started and six air bases bombed again. As the final mission, Israel Air Force bombed Raspanas and Abu Suer once again, and last squadrons landed on 7 pm in Israel. Arguably, more important than the numbers of aircraft destroyed are the numbers either destroyed or damaged. So, how did focus affect Arab Air Force operations? The impact was devastating. During June 5, 1967, the Israel Air Force counted only 51 Egypt Air Force combat aircraft sorties. The Egypt Air Force and Syrian Air Force exploited less than 13% and 57% respectively of their actual combat potential during the crucial first day of the war. Similarly, Iraq and the Jordanian Air Forces flew offensive operations against Israel only until the Israel Air Force raided H3, Amman and Mafraq, when Iraqi and Jordanian Air Force offensive operations practically ceased until the end of day 1 of the war. This was all about Operation Focus, don't forget to check out our channel for more videos about Arab-Israelis war. Thank you, see you in the next video.